hey kids, how goes it? This is Uncle Spike. Now the, you know, the Dark Souls of the New York Times best-selling comic book nerds. You know, it turns out this motherfucker is a New York Times bestseller now. And it's funny because a lot of things uh, happened. I the the video I wanted to make originally, not uh, not today. This is uh, you know uh, Wednesday morning. I wanted to make a Hall Halloween video. You know, I wanted to talk to you about De Death Vigil by Stepan Shajic. Shajic, you know the guy. This is a great read for like everyone. Like, I, I don't know why it didn't make it past the eight issues, but uh, this would appeal to comic comic gators or true believers or SJWs or anime fans, video game fans, hardcore comic book nerds, the the, the Dark Souls, the Ikarugas, the Ninja Gaiden of comic book nerds. Great art, great story, fun story, Halloween story. It deals with uh, a lot of tough themes in a very quirky, very fun kind of way. So if you can pick up that vigil, you'll be doing yourself a, a favor. But anyway, uh, I, I got sick and I didn't do that. And I was watching uh, Dr. Lehman's video about H.P. Um, Lovecraft. And yeah, it, 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 was, it, it was good overall. I disagree with some points, but it doesn't matter, that's neither here nor there, but it's permanent to review my, my favorite Lovecraftian movies, like, I, I do love In the Mad of Terror, but I always watch this one, because I love it so much in, since the 90s, so I, I decided to go with, you know, spice it up a little bit, because I'm, I've always been kind of a purist, and I have always related, you know, Halloween straightforward with, uh, you know, the, the Universal Monsters, but, uh, Gotta have to go with my boys here, alien and aliens. That was a pretty good meme while I was uh, sick, and it's Comic Con week here, so I have to, you know, be in fighting form because I'm gonna visit with some of my old friends, like, you know, Ron Mars and uh, Mike Norton, um, my very good, excellent friend Nana Kuronoma, the Austrian cross player and uh, yeah but then I, I, I was I, I went to the store just to get you know bread and cream and stuff like that and, and I, I saw the there's a new hardcore edition of Spider-Verse on sale at you know Walmart and everywhere in Mexico City like the racks I, I showed you the other day which they had Spider Verse and they had the second volume where I was featured as a as a writer and a translator and for the Mexican edition even an editor. Uh, but it, it's it's a funny story and then it all clicked when I was watching you know catching up with my YouTube friends. I was watching this excellent video by I Love Comics by England team gonna link every all of this uh, bullshit I'm talking about in the you know where down below and uh, yeah and it, it, it dawned on me like yeah it's important we talk about I, I also I also watched uh, sorry if I interrupt my train of thoughts I'm just like that I'm better at I'm better I'm way better at writing than you know blogging and stuff but uh, I like I like the video blogs because I, I get to practice my English, I get to engage with you because a lot of you people don't like to read articles and that's okay. And uh, yeah, I was, I was watching weaponized nerd rage videos as well about, you know, why he's a gamer uh, comic gate advocate and uh, why, why is it a movement, not that we are the group. And you know the the history of comics gate by england team by i love comics excellent videos and i think it's important we all establish because we are all individuals after all we all establish our our history our motives you know so for me it kind of started 
when I got to work with Nick Lowe in these books. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what happened. I was hired origin originally by another editor who is no longer at Marvel. She was one of the hires by Stephen Walker who was one of these uh, actors. She was an actress. And she jumped uh, bow to DC uh, shortly after she hired me. So she went to DC to Vertigo and then you know she went to pursue her well, that was around the time they moved to California, and I guess she went to perform to pursue what interested her, and which was like movies and TV and shit. And then I got stuck with Nick Blow, and even though I delivered the script months in advance, he just edited the thing last minute and did a, a, ter a terrible mess of a thing. So much I had to, you know, edit the the Mexican version. Because he screwed up, this was published in English. I mean, the, the direct market version was published originally. And I, I don't know if I'm the first one to be published in two languages at the same time. Like, immediately it was in English, and this was once in Spanish, even though this is the direct, the direct edition. Yeah, that's, I'm doxing myself, and, you know, that's my name. Enrique Gonzalez Push. But yeah, I had a terrible experience working with uh, Nick Lowe. And, and, and I've, I've known about editorial problems before because it wasn't the first time I picked up work for Marvel indirectly, directly. It was the first time I did it directly as a writer. But I had been working as a script interpreter for artists in Me Mexico City since 2012, which was a couple of years before that. And I had also done this uh, for some French comics with Mario Guevara, but that's neither here nor there. I got to work with Roy Thomas in those, so that's fucking dream come true. He, he made the X-Men what they are today. I mean, even before the Clermont run, he he brought you know the the sentinel stories like the the real social conscience to the x-men and they are my favorite characters but that's neither here nor there so i get to work with Neil low and he does everything last minute I, I he I, like i sent him my you know index cards which are very basic script writing tools he he went like, oh, I don't understand this. Please put it in language I can understand. Please put it in a, you know, a word uh, file or something, which I did. I had to dump it down because if it's not the same, it doesn't work the same. If you knew with index cards, you you put what, the, you know, you could understand at what time, at what s scene and the, the plot line they're following. And you can you know, change the, the order and you can like graphically see how you develop your story. But, you know, the unprepared editor and model didn't catch that. So yeah, he did everything last me. I, I, I like, uh, a couple of days I had to stay in, I was just walking out of my house and I got the mails like, hey, you need to see this, you need to correct this. Yeah, and, and let me show you something. The guy fucked up so bad I mean, he also screwed the, the Spanish in this because he hired, I don't know who the fuck he hired for the Spanish in this, but it was terrible. There's, I, I can even link to a video where I had to talk to the Mexican audience, which I have to tell you. Most uh, Spanish speakers are used to Mexican translations and to Mexican Spanish because Mexico has the largest Spanish speaking, uh, you know, population. And a lot of media comes from Mexico, like even media from other places, it's digested through Mexico and goes to like South American shit. But yeah, they, these look like, like they are poorly, uh, like the print was running out of ink, but it wasn't. Uh, Paco Herrera, the penciler, told me that they, they fucked up the filters he put on and, and they didn't put them back when they edited or altered the, the artwork. 
So it looks like it's the, the 70s film filter that this was supposed to have didn't happen because they do a fucking poor, poor job. And then uh, I was uh, also helping, you know, Gerardo Sandoval out with uh, Age of Apocalypse as a script interpreter and he, the couple of issues he did for Captain Marvel. And I, I saw it again, like they published this Free Comic Book Day Secret Wars thing. And it was in Castilian Spanish that if go to if you're Spanish speaking go to any form where you know like like anime translations and dubs and stuff they hate Castilian and I tried to explain him like and he he wouldn't listen and uh, I pitched a couple of things he wouldn't listen I'm just tired of him like his work is fucking mediocre I don't have to deal with these mediocre people if I at least if I'm gonna if my comics are gonna be fucked up, I'm gonna mess them up myself. I don't need another fucking idiot to mess them, so I decided to just keep on doing things behind the scenes as a script interpreter and doing my own thing, which hasn't been very good because, oh, finding good pencilers is a pain in the butt. But that's neither here nor there. That's that's my mediocre start, at both at Marvel and with comics. I just got tired of, of, uh, of dealing with these editors, which even back in my day in 2012, I had to correct some scripts, in the sense that they even have messed up the characters that appear in it, like. Uh, I, I, I even called out Janine Schaefer for doing this, but she sent out an Extreme X-Men uh, script to Raul Valdez and she messed up the characters. Like, it was written in the script, like, Armor does this, Armor does that, and uh, Armor didn't fucking even appear in the book. She, she, she confused Armor with danger, so if I didn't correct it, I would have given Raul the you know the script with danger he would have drawn danger for a couple of pages and when he submitted that tomorrow it was oh no we, we meant armor you have to redo these those couple of pages of two days of work you have to redo this again what kind of a show are you fucking running and yeah and and this coincided like after spider verse the, the secret wars thing came and i think it was the, the breaking point like where you know editors are just are just not capable of doing shit anymore let's just re reboot this they tried to reboot this they said they were gonna destroy the 616 and the ultimate universe and become one they, they didn't even know how to cat to keep that up and they just kept calling it like 616 they don't even know if it's in continuity if it's another 616 they don't know what the fuck they're doing and uh, yeah, I lost interest in Marvel and like in general, even in the X-Men, like I, I, I completely quit reading Marvel superheroes at that point. Like after X-Men 92, it was like, yeah, well, uh, like I got the cartoon DVDs right here. Like I don't, I don't need bland, mediocre shit. It, and it pains me because I was until that point, a guy whose uh, pull list was at least 75% Marvel and I am the kind of guy who could drop uh, like you know a couple of hundred dollars a month in comics and uh, yeah it, it was devastating and it was interesting because it, you know as a kid you dream like oh I'm doing this work for Marvel and stuff and you find out it's a shithole like I didn't get with the cool guys like the cool guys got, got to do some cool stuff and to be creative and to try to make the, the best stories possible whenever they could even when they had problems with like for example the money thing and Bob Harris and stuff you, you could find like little nuggets of gold around it wasn't though that wasn't the case anymore so yeah it, it happened with them you know SJW just got into it and the, the thing is I think SJW is like and um, thriving comics because comics is a very isolated uh, uh, hobby like you read comics by yourself and 
it's not really that common that comic book fans are, you know, as social in their hobbies, and other than maybe talking like to one friend here, one friend there. Uh, I'm a very social guy, I'm a very social nerd, even when I was in high school I wasn't bullied, like, for starters I'm like 6'5", so, and, and I was like a metal kid too, so uh, I was a tough motherfucker even when I was in high school, I, I was in high school in Mexico City, so, like, stories of, you know, fighting guys out of school and whatever are, are not even uh, rare. So, yeah, I'm sorry about my voice being a little coarse, but you know, I've been sick and shit, and it's like 7 in the morning, you can listen to the birds, even though it's a great day with a lot of rain, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm telling my, my comic gate story, this, this was a pause, you, you, I hope you got your soda or whatever, your soda pop, and uh, yeah, I, I, and the, the thing is that it's not that, oh, Marvel is not making my characters the way I want them. Uh, it's because they are effectively screwing the, the, the medium in general and they are alienating uh, good people in the sense that good artists, good, uh, way more talented than that will ever be like Ed Brubaker and stuff. There's a reason why they not only left Marvel, they left Captain America. They took criminal out of Marvel owned icon. They like he his uh, creator owned stuff because Marvel is not a not a, not a place for creators anymore. It's a hive mind, and SGW is thriving Marvel because they see these vulnerable people and and I think like people like Dan Slott were probably bullied in high school and they they get so upset when they hear like these bullying stories without knowing that these are cry bullies we're dealing with like Heather Antos the thing about Heather Antos is not, it's not that she was the fo focus of attacks she made herself the focus of attacks uh, especially by her own even without her knowing because she knows that she knows when she does stuff like this but she's so terrible at what she does and how she is as a person that she even does it indirectly like her, her work is mediocre and I know people who work at Lucasfilm I myself actually translate Lucasfilm books for Mexico they are double edited they, they, are, they, they have the Marvel filters who basically don't do shit and I know because I get them the scripts that way they send it to artists and they have typos they have uh, they, they use these dictating uh, programs they don't even that doesn't even recognize when they're talking about day like the actual day or day as you know the royal day people <coughs> I know I know this shit I see it and yeah they get double edited the, the Lucasfilm crew has to approve shit and stuff even for my translations and the translation of my co-workers they have to approve like this is the language we want to use we have like coordination about terminology and stuff it's it's very it's a very tight boat but that's how you run a, a license a franchise and there's at least a, a, I won't say I, I don't want to put the, the word passion in every one that works there but there's at least a commitment to make a good product to live up to the label they are representing this has not been happening with Marvel for a long time and they just you know go the SGW tactic uh, some, something you don't like is right wing like everyone who is not fucking Stalin is right wing or in their eyes or Nazis or racist or sexist like I've been called almost everyone and, and it was funny the, the, the first time I was called right sexist on Twitter I was with uh, with Arlette um, she she was basically she's from the Netherlands but like I have another apartment she was staying there but she was in my house all the time in my bed and stuff 
but we were just hanging in my bed, like talking and watching videos and shit. And I thought, do you think I'm sexist? And she was fucking laughing. And uh, yeah, I'm fucking Mexican and I'm basically a mixed race. So, <laughs> like, I'm a person of color, I guess. Also, the first Mexican writer at Marvel. They didn't care about it. They didn't parade me, and I don't care because if I was parade, I want I want to be unmarried. And I don't want like, don't call me Enrique, call me Spike, just writer. Like, if I want a medal for being Mexican, I will join the army. You know. <laughs> and yeah, it, and it just got worse with the Trump hysteria. You know, uh, how everyone that is, you know, one of these. Regressive left, which I don't believe the left is uh, even a thing, but this regressive, they're like, Trump won, Trump won, Trump won, I'm going to put it on Twitter every single day, every fucking day. Even though they don't even know half the story of why Trump won, they don't understand the story of why Trump won. And I'm, I'm, I'm even a Bernie bro, like, uh, if I supported someone, mostly it was Bernie until he was cheated out. Then I had no other choice than say, like, Hillary is a crook, and I, Hillary is a crook because she has done fucked up things in my country you never talked about. Like the energetic reforms she made with my president who are still fucking the peso here, even though she's not even president. They don't see this, they just have their own fucking narrative. And about the thing about politics and comics, yeah, there's there's been social commentary in some politics and comics, which is way different than propaganda. Way different than propaganda is just meant to preach down and to, you know, you, SJWs and Scientologists do the same thing. They are proselytizing, which is not a, a discussion, you know, which is not dialectics. It's not, they, they are not writing before Vendetta. They are writing uh, the fucking, a fucking feminist bell hooks book that doesn't make any sense. It, they really don't. And, uh, yeah, and, and Kelly said, so, um, well, oh, honey, or sweetie, you think Captain America was a social justice warrior? He kicked the butt of the first social justice warrior, which was Hitler. Why was Hitler a social justice warrior? Because social justice, idiots, learn about politics if you are going to pretend to talk about them. Social justice is a term that describes doctrines, which instate basically Marxism, as a way for social uh, engineering, like, for example, uh, I'm going to use my people so anyone doesn't get butt hurt, whatever, like, Mexicans don't make as much money as everyone else, or we're going to take money from everyone else, so we're going to build up Mexicans, and that's fucking condescending, because Mexicans, trust me, you know why Marvel keeps hiring Mexicans for, you know, the artwork? Because you'll see, you'll see Carlos Barberi, you'll see Humberto Ramos, you'll see Paco Medina, you'll see Gerardo Sandoval, you'll see Marta Gracia, you'll see uh, El Pato Delgado, you'll see Dono Sanchez, they, they just hired my friend Marcos. Uh, why why do they do that? They, 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 they have a burton in color, so too. Why do they do that? Because Mexico is a real meritocracy and this is survival of the fittest because this place is still the Wild West. So if you're not a fucking cowboy defending what's yours, no one's gonna do it for you, son. That's what there's, I think, there's a lot of Latin, Latins in the United States, you know, people from Americans, from Latin heritage, from Mexican heritage, who, who sided with the people that wasn't condescending to them, because we like to earn stuff. Most of the time. Like, quotas are so condescending. It, it's insulting. And, yeah. The, the thing about social justice, Kelly, is that it was that victim narrative, what Hitler used to become, to make uh, the, the Weimar, you know, place or whatever with the German Germany the Third Reich he was like oh oh we the the poor Germans are so oppressed by the, those evil racist Jews they just want to oppress us that's their tactic now change Jew 
uh, for white men you have your social justice doctrine captain america but if you don't know politics if you don't read anything other than propaganda just keep to yourself it's better to be silent and be thought of a moron than just to blur shit out and be proven to be a moron but anyway i think it's important i think well it's not as important as avoiding you know nuclear war or whatever but comics is an, is, it's, an, it's a valid art form it's an industry and it's a very difficult art form even more so today that you see the, the postmodern art bullshit like they are like Alex Ross even if you don't like it or Dan Barrington or, or take your picture Jeff Ansajic is like millions of miles more of a craft craft craftsman than any of these postmodern bullshitters and you're hiring them you're hiring this young adult novelists who should just be called millennial novelists who whose idea of making novels is to filling up with you know bourbon shit for 200 pages which is not making a novel they i bet you and i and i, and I make this challenge they, they cannot say what's the difference between a short story and a novel and they, they would think like a novel is like a, a you know how do you call it in English? It's like like some uh, pastiche of writings, which have some semblance of characters but don't even have a plot. So, something very postmo. And these people are making comics now. They, they're so fucking ridiculous. Like Gary Rivera with her shit. Like oh, I hate white people. You're Puerto Rican. Do you fucking know that 70% of Puerto Rico is white? Also, America Chavez cannot be Latin. Latin. If you put the X, it's stupid because Latin in English is already neutral. And it's correct because you're in America. You're an American. You're in Puerto Rico. But people in Puerto Rico, in the, the actual country, I know it's part of like a colony of the US. But those people are certain, certain white. Also, she can be Latin because she's not from this fucking dimension. That doesn't make any fucking sense. It's like saying fucking Luke Skywalker, you know, he's from Austria or Chewbacca. Yeah, he grew up in Australia. That's fucking stupid. That's not, it's, it's like, like, I, I would expect high schoolers to write better than that. So that's what we're, we just want to make comics real again. Yeah, suck it up. Make comics real again is the only goal. At least my goal. And what I see the, the hashtag Comicsgate struggling for and, you know, just be respectful to, to the customers. Be, be an average, uh, like, why is it that this problem happens mostly with Marvel? And just around this time, like, how, 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 like, I've been reading comics since 89. Never heard about white supremacists and Nazis and the alt-right and whatever in comics until, uh, like, a couple of years ago. And even when Gail Simone did her stupid uh, women in refrigerators meme about the Ron Mars, Green Lantern run, it was stupid in front of them because that's fucking bullshit. Like, people understand that these lady cannot understand what you know a plot device is and a secondary character is and the motivation for the his uh, the protagonist is no that's that's fucking lame but anyway just let me know what you think I, i've been rambling too much i know you people hate these long format videos uh, i don't know i don't make money out of this i don't pretend to make money out of this just i hope you had a happy halloween feliz dia de muertos uh, though that's that's ironic like happy day of the death you know just make comics